backlog supply chains, who's the culprit? Having a discussion today with Christine Barnhart, she is Vice President of Product Strategy with Verison. Hi, Christine. Hi, thanks for having me. So indeed, we do have backlog supply <laughs> chains, and I'm wondering to what degree do just-in-time strategies and lean sourcing management figure into the situation we find ourselves in today? Yeah, you know, in retrospect, I think about a lot of the things that I helped put into place in uh -oh. the mid-90s and 2000s. So it's all you, it's your fault. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> de-vertically inter integrating people, mm -hmm. sending stuff into low-cost countries, kind of this myopic focus, if you will, on cost and, and not really considering as, you know, world dynamics change, geopolitical changes, climate changes, how that would impact um, you know, how supply chains function. So I, mm -hmm. I really feel like what we're, what we're seeing today is very, very much um, a reflection of this myopic focus on lean and just in time for mm -hmm. the better part of the last 20 years. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be generous. And may, maybe it made sense at the time. <laughs> it did, Okay. It, yeah. So, but now it doesn't anymore. You're right, it doesn't, yeah. yeah. I mean, now we understand that, uh, you know, transportation isn't always cheap. Right. Um, and we understand that you know we can have a lot more strife from a geo geopolitical standpoint, mm -hmm. trade wars, you know, um, actual wars that we just haven't seen. I think in the last twenty or thirty years. Right. Okay. So time for a paradigm it shift. It is time for a shift. Yeah. Without throwing out the complete concept, bringing in this new idea, and I and I'm wondering, especially now, how it might be solved, how we might use the idea of transitioning away from manual data management as a solution to this. Tell me about how that figures in. Absolutely, so you know, if you think about supply chains and technology, I mean, we've had, we've been digital for many years. We've had mm -hmm. ERP and whatnot, but much of our data management is still is manual, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of manual updates. Mm -hmm. We really haven't applied the technology that's available, and what I mean by that is natural language processing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, the ability for the system to really make sense out of all of that disconnected data and, and bring some level of harmony. And let's be honest, mm -hmm. people don't really want to do that work is what we're seeing, right? I mean, if sure. you think about millennials, post-millennials, they do not want to sit with like rows and columns and try to find the data that's an outlier, that doesn't match, doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And so for us, I, I really feel like companies are finally starting to understand the need to embrace those technologies. So it becomes a question of unifying the data. It does. It's coming from so many different sources. It's coming at you from so many different directions. Right. Tell me about, is that possible today? I mean, Absolutely. Are we, are we at that point where we can do that? Absolutely, we are at that point today. Um, tools, systems, technology exists that allow you to uh, aggregate data from multiple systems, mm -hmm. um, make sense of it, understand what's the same, what's different. Um, so you know, we would call that you know disparate systems, right? And right. harmonizing the data. Absolutely, those those systems exist today and are actually being leveraged in multiple facets, right? So um, you know whether it's you know inventory or planning or you know uh, predictive maintenance, a, a lot of those tools exist. It's the application of them that I think is the most interesting. Some of the key words you just said is make sense of the data. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of data out there, but it's just maybe too much for humans to handle in a manual way now. It is. We spend a lot of time creating data lakes, most of which are data swamps. Yes. Um, okay. And then I think now <laughs> science tells us that humans generally can only see two-way interactions. Um, mm -hmm. Fortunately, you know, artificial intelligence doesn't have that restriction, and so it can actually see connections that's very, very difficult for humans to spot. Okay, on their own. so you just mentioned AI. Let's talk more about that. I okay. mean, is the AI is sufficiently sophisticated now to actually being able to make? What is it? Is is it descriptive? Is it predictive? Is it proscriptive? <laughs> you know, what, at what stage is AI in terms of its value to the user in the organization? I think it depends on how you're trying to apply it. Um, you know, some processes and systems are much more mature than others, but from my perspective, what I've seen over the last several years is, you almost always need to start with, first let's visualize it and describe it, mm -hmm. and then once I understand it, then I can use that data to be predictive and then prescriptive. So it's really a bit of a maturity journey, I think, um, both for the technology 
and for the people yeah. that are using that technology. Yeah, I was going to mention well, the whole concept behind machine learning. Right. Is that it gets better. Right, 100%. Just like people get better. Just like the people get The more they do better. something. <laughs> Until <So>. they retire. <laughs> and then, and then Wait, their knowledge is lost. machines don't retire. <laughs> that's right. No, they don't get to go off into the golden sunset. Exactly, and I think that's the other key thing that we've seen in the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. I think COVID accelerated it, but you know, previously when we talked about AI machine learning, there was almost this negative. Like when you talked about productivity, it's oh you're gonna you're gonna displace workers. Well now yeah. we have a huge shortage of workers. Um, you know, the the great sands demic, if you will, right? Lack of people resources. Um, and we have a lot of knowledge retiring, baby boomers really retiring at a record pace. Mm -hmm. All that information, all that knowledge is walking out the door. And so um, solutions that are really centered around machine learning and artificial intelligence help you institutionalize that knowledge. And they really help bring that together in a way where maybe I don't need three people to look at the data, I need one person that's mm -hmm. looking at what the solution brings forward, the insights, and, and make decisions. It's so great to hear that this technology has reached a, a kind of critical mass to it the has. point where it's a real value Absolutely. to the organizations. And I, I also feel like companies have no choice but to embrace this given all of the challenges. I agree with that, you. That I they mean, face today. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for that, Christine. Uh, can I take a moment to ask you a little bit about Verison specifically? Uh, especially uh, the idea of starting with MRO optimization and, and Ver Verison's own suite of solutions. I'm wondering how they can help companies to brace themselves against yeah. future disruptions in their supply chains. Yeah, so um, you know, we really focus on optimizing inventory while you're reducing risk, mm -hmm. which is a key difference. I mean, 10 years ago, if we would have had this conversation, I, I would only talk about, we got to reduce the inventory, we, less working capital. Yeah. I think now we really understand the need to do both. Um, and we're very focused in supply management. So the things that you order that are critical to your business, what we've seen is, while it's great to make sure you do that on the direct material side and the things that you buy, it's such a big pie, if you will. It can be really difficult for your people to get their arms around mm -hmm. and to understand. So if you start on the MRO side, which is a little bit smaller, it's less risky generally, those components are a little bit more available in the market, um, you can actually learn the tools, the systems, you can start to become comfortable with you know, interacting with the machine to help you make decisions, and then that helps you hasten that journey, if you will, from a maturity standpoint. Yeah, and of course, term. you aren't cutting humans out of the loop completely with Verison's uh, solutions at all, are you? No, I mean, uh, we're really augmenting human intelligence, if you will. I mean, yeah. we're a support for the people that are, you know, doing those jobs day in and, and day out. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christine, for leading us through a historical view of old views and how we need to take new views and a little bit about how Verison is addressing the subject, too. Really appreciate you being with me today. Thank you. Thank you. That was Christine Barnhart with Verison. Thank you very much for watching.